What a Bank of America, Mass General Hospital, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, Bain Capital, and Wayfair all have in common? A week ago, the answer was not a whole lot. But today, the CEOs of all five organizations and about 90 others from around the country are all part of a nonpartisan coalition called A Day for Democracy, with the goal of increasing voter turnout in the U.S. and not a moment too soon. In the 2016 election, just a little more than half of all eligible voters cast their ballots, putting us behind more than 25 similar democracies in voter participation. Some of those other countries got up to nearly 90 percent of eligible voters taking part in their last election. So what are they doing that we are not? For starters, they don't make it quite so difficult for people to get to the polls. Many hold their elections on the weekend or make it a national holiday so workers get the day off to cast their ballots. But as you know, we hold most elections on Tuesdays. And with no federal mandate to give workers time off, many are forced to choose between their vote or their paycheck. And over the past few years, we've managed to make things even worse. Thanks to a 2013 Supreme Court decision repealing a key part of the landmark 1965 Voting Rights Act, some southern states have reinstated a few extra hurdles, like requiring an ID to vote and restricting early voting. Changes making it that much harder for many people to make it to the polls, particularly black and working class voters. A day for democracy is coming together to make it all a little bit easier, at least for their employees. I'm now joined by Peter Palangian. He's the chair and CEO of Intercontinental Real Estate Corporation. He created the coalition and one of its earliest members, Linda Pizzuti Henry, managing director of the Boston Globe. Linda, it's great to see you. Peter, great to meet you. Thanks for being here. Thank nice you. to be with you. Peter, why'd you uh, start this thing? What was the motivation for you? So two things. Uh, I don't want to sound too sappy or romantic, but it bothered <laughs> me since I was a child that only half our country votes. And if, like yourselves, I'm expecting, and maybe your viewers, you've been watching as much news as we have at home in the last six months. Um, you know, one night, this is a true story, uh, at midnight, we were pretty well newsed out and my wife stood up in the bed, not in a naughty way, and she said, what are we going to do about this? And I had this idea that maybe a small way I could lean in would be with corporations, with a network of business friends, and, and with a small hope that that, that could grow. And, and that's really where it came from. By the way, you didn't have to apologize. We like romance on this show, so that was perfectly fine. So, Linda, why did you sign on, and what did you sign on to? What did you agree to do? Jim, I, I, when I think of romantic, I think of your show. It's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. So yeah. does everybody, I think. But go ahead. <laughs> um, well, you know, Peter is uh, doing something really great here, and, and he's one of those people who's taking his... Uh, network and contacts and leveraging it for good. And so it makes all the sense in the world for the globe. Uh, we do our part and try to keep people informed and um, have the information that they need so that they can vote in accordance to their values. And uh, so for us, in looking inwards and saying, well, how are we making sure that the people who are who are reporting on this also are supported in voting themselves is is an important part for us as well. And, one, and as a part of this element is if people need time off to go vote, they get time off. Is that part of the pledge starting with you, Linda? Um, yeah, we have it so that one is that we're going to make sure that our we, we happen to be in this business of making sure people know. And so we already provide you know, um, voting registration links and um, uh, voting locations and, and that sort of stuff. But we also just making sure that there's mail in information for people who are willing to go to the polls. And that if people need to come in late or leave early in order to vote, that it's just a, a of course, of course. So, Peter, did anybody turn you down for this nonpartisan effort? Anybody say no? Um, very little bit of that. I was astonished at how easy it was. Even kind of large bureaucrat, what you'd think would be bureaucratic institutions, would shoot back a message saying, "Love the idea. I'll get back to you." Most people said yes in the first phone call. Uh, there were a few no's. Um, and uh, one was for a very Why? good reason. Someone was on the board of, a, of one of the leading vaccine companies and didn't want uh, the perception it. of conflict. Um, there were a few that were concerned about uh, this kind of idea around voter fraud uh, related to mail-in, and I had a little pushback around that, but I'd say it was a 98% uh, kind of conversion rate on a phone call or an email. I want to get back to this voter fraud and confusion in just a couple 
of seconds. But, uh, Linda, I know this effort is nonpartisan, but considering the outpouring of support for this as quickly as it was, am I naive to think if this election, the people at the top of the ticket were, say, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, that there probably wouldn't be this level of enthusiasm? Is that not a fair statement? Well, I think that if we didn't have 150,000 people who had died across the country, then maybe. But I think that, you know, the the idea that there are consequences of our elections is really is really present in a lot of people's minds right now. So you could say it has to do with the ticket or you could say it has to do with the fact that we're in a pandemic and we're not winning. And, you know, Peter, uh, this rest, after, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's that? I was going to say the civil unrest isn't directly correlated, but it kind of is. You know, there's a, a the idea that we have to give more people a voice is definitely linked to passion around voting. You know, I read on your press release that you had a relationship with something called TurboVote.org. And so I decided I'd go on. I typed in a couple of pieces of information, including they said, do you want to be contacted by text or email? I gave them my cell phone number and about a nanosecond, I got a text telling me what registration deadlines were, how to get a mail-in ballot, a whole bunch of things. And then saying, and by the way, we're going to keep reminding you as the process goes along what the deadlines are and that sort of thing. So there's sort of like a one-stop uh, uh, sort of cyber assistant for whoever buys into this, yes? Yeah, you are That's cutting. right. Uh, yeah. Our Peter pledge allows place, yeah. for our, our pledge allows for employers to work with other responsible platforms like TurboVote, but we thought it would to make it extra easy for CEOs or head of HR departments to push down through their employee base, it would make sense to align with someone like that. We vetted a number of companies, a number of excellent ones, by the way, but TurboVote uh, had a lot of flexibility around it. And that reminder piece is huge. You know, I talked to the former mayor of Cambridge and he said to say hello to you, Anthony Galluccio. Um, and uh -huh. I asked him about uh, polls changing in Cambridge and he said, absolutely. And so the place I went to for 30 years in the, in the Belmont Town Hall, that one will probably be there. But maybe the Chenry Middle School won't be. The behaviors will be different this time. So that turbo vote piece that, between that and the pandemic will be extra important. You know, Linda, uh, uh, this, l let me call it logistical effort, and I don't mean that in a, in a cheap sort of way, but sort of to facilitate the information and the ability of people to vote is obviously critically important. But it's got to go deeper than this. When in the last presidential election, I don't know if I said this at the top, 56 percent, barely a majority. Some may say, well, they were the two most disliked in the polls candidates in American history. But do you think about, I'm sure you do, obviously, with your newspaper, what is it that, that keeps people in this country from feeling they have a civic obligation to participate in a democracy? I think it's a, that's a really big question, Jim, that we could we could talk about. There's... There's a lot of uh, disenfranchisement, people thinking that their vote doesn't matter, people thinking that it's not worth their time. They don't feel like they're voting for people that represent them anyway. So I think that there's there's voter disenfranchisement issues. There's been a lot of crazy redistricting that's been going on that's also sort of designed to make voting, I think, less accessible. And I think other people just don't feel like it's their their duty. So I, I think it's a it's a number of things, and and it's up to you and I. And what we do is to to not only keep people informed of what options are, but to emphasize how their vote really does matter. Peter, I want to know how you plan to deal with misinformation and confusion. And again, I know this is a nonpartisan effort, but here's just a little bit from the president of the United States as recently as yesterday. Florida is different from other states. I mean, in. Nevada, where you have a governor, he said, let's just send out millions of ballots and the post office cannot be prepared. I haven't spoken to the post office about it, but I don't know how they could possibly be prepared. Florida has been working on this for years and they have a very good system of mail in and that would be absentee or even beyond absentee. So for Florida, you can mail in your ballots. You don't have to go in maybe a couple of other states. They've worked out a system, but this took years to do. So, Peter, there's virtually nothing in what the president said that is true.
But you can imagine a person who says, I'm scared to go to the polls. I was going to vote by mail. But I heard the president of the United States say, I don't live in Florida. It's not reliable. It's not safe. What are you going to try to do collectively to get facts out to people and displace all this, this dangerous misinformation? Sure. Our, our website will address this. You know, as we grow this and scale it, it'll be hard to have kind of intimate conversations with the first hundred people who signed up. But you're right. And there's some facts to get out there. Just because someone says something doesn't mean it's true. Twenty five million people voted through mail in voting in the last election. That's a big number. We had no pandemic four years ago. So, um, you know, this is surmountable. Um, the president's children have done robocalls for uh, mail in voting. And so, you know, we need to talk about this. It's been done, as I'm sure you know, in Utah successfully. Uh, it, it, so it's a matter of getting the facts out there. And by the way, the president has voted uh, by mail as well. Are you, Peter, I am assuming, well, it's terrific. You've got roughly 100 really big organizations. And you can go to your website. We'll put that up on the screen and see who they are. I assume you're continuing to recruit uh, most of these businesses so far are Boston-based, but for what, from what I understand from you, your hope is that CEOs around the country buy into this thing. Is that not correct? That's absolutely correct. We've had early inroads in California. My wife worked there for 25 years, and some uh, strong companies have come aboard. We've signed up also employers in Florida, uh, law firms in Philadelphia, law firm in Cincinnati, Ohio, the mayor of Springboro, uh, Ohio, signed up. Um, so we are about to get to other states. We officially launched yesterday. Hey, uh, Linda, so I know that uh, running an organization like The Globe, you have hard targets. You want so many subscribers by a certain day. Lots of things like that. What's your turnout goal at the Boston Globe now that you're part of a day for democracy? Um, well, it, it'll be hard to measure, but we're going to aim for aim for 90 percent at least. Um, and and that people really do take their civic responsibility and civic opportunity, um, take advantage of it. Can you say, do you, re, as someone who's got to deal with reality every day in a newspaper, are you convinced this thing can work? I think that it can, it can only help um, to, you know, that employers are saying, okay, we need to make sure that people have what they need. That they, that they know where to go, that they have the time in order to do it so that you don't have to make a choice. Oh, am I going to use some of my personal time in order to go to um, the ballots or not? So having, um, having companies say, we support you in taking the time to do this makes and, and sort of celebrating the fact that people are doing it creates a culture where it's sort of expected and celebrated um, and easier for people to, to take part in. Peter Palangian, Linda Pizzuti, Henry, may you succeed and thousands of other CEOs like you. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. You can find out more about their efforts at adayfordemocracy.com. And a reminder, if you're planning to vote by mail in next month's Massachusetts primary election, which all voters are eligible to do this year, the deadline to get your application in is August 26th. But TurboVote.org recommends you send in at least two weeks before the deadline, which is next week. Once you get your ballot, if you can send it in that same day if you want, but it has to be in your city or town election official's hand by the time, time polls close on September 1st to be counted. And you can also hand deliver that ballot the day of if you need to. For more information on all of this, as well as all the many dates and deadlines for the general election, you can visit MassEarlyVote.com or, again, TurboVote.org.